I was doing good at the start, but not choosing Team Bubbus from the beginning has clearly cursed me. Clearly. Although you unlocked all you needed to, so uh, that's all good. And also you've already unlocked Kingdom Hearts 3. I don't have to do DDD at all if I don't want to. <laughs> exactly. In my speed run to try and get to the end in case we got to the spoiler stuff, I actually totally skipped over Dream Drop Distance. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I know the music, I know the story, let's try and get to the end. I've unlocked it already. Though, I think we're good. I think we won't be getting to that probably today anyways, so that'll give me a nice, solid week to get there. I won't count your chickens before the hatch, mate. Oh no, the chickens, they talk here in Toontown. They don't, no, it's Disney Town, it's not fucking Toontown. Sorry, sorry. It's Disney Town, although I'm pretty sure that there is a sign up which says Toontown. So, uh, mixed messages, Square Enix, what were you thinking? And I think it's it's very much based off of the, um, the Toontown area of Disneyland, which looks oh, it is. very similar to this. Which, it's weird, because they call it you know, Disney Town, and it's like, hmm, who is this Disney? Where did this name come from? That's a question that I want answered. Well, no, but it, 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 it's totally fine, because Mickey Mouse has met Walt Disney, so it's it's all good and consistent with the, uh, the law. Can you imagine if they, like, come around and they make Walt Disney a Keyblade wielder, or, like, a Keyblade master from the times of yore? That is never happening. But what if it did? <laughs> I mean, we have Master Ericus, who is literally square. What if, uh, well, I guess Yen Sid, then, it would be, you know, I guess he represents that. Fine, fair. I mean, pretty much I think the reason that Master Ericus was created was because Master Yen Sid existed. Mm-hmm. Now we just need someone whose name uh, is can be rearranged into Enix to really, you know, bring them all in. Or someone whose name could be rearranged from Buena Vista Games. <laughs> well, I mean, if it was going to be the, the Enix, then it, it would be uh, Master Sheen. <laughs> Sorry, all I can think of is Sheen from, from Jimmy Neutron. <laughs> yeah, can you take on Ultra Lord? <laughs> <laughs> Power of darkness, Sora. <laughs> That'd be so good. Oh, uh, that's not even Disney. Oh, jeez, Jimmy, I don't want to lose my heart. <laughs> uh, I'll leave the voice acting to Mr. Paulson. Thank you very much. Yep, yep. Oh, that feels good. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Where are we off to now? Uh, next up we have uh, Lilo and Stitch World, I believe. Hey, deep space, although I'm still bitter it's not Hawaii. And one thing I did try was, um, because when you play with, in this stage, you do get Stitch as a partner, which is interesting, because as far as I'm aware, he's never been a party member. He was a summon, and you could do the um, D-Link with him. But he was never here like this, which is okay, sure. Yeah. But I was curious if, um, if you played with Sora, would he be uh, in his uh, Kingdom Hearts 2 no jumpsuit look? And the answer is no, he's always in the jumpsuit. I thought they would have the foresight, but no. No, well, it's because it's, it's not Kingdom Hearts 2 Sora, so... Uh... That's true. But also because this is definitely the birth by sleep model. Because <laughs> you can tell by the ears. How do we feel about Lilo and Stitch? I love Lilo and Stitch. It is probably my favourite non-musical Disney film of all time. And I will love it and protect it for the entirety of my life. And anybody who says that it's not good needs shooting. Wow. No, I kind of agree with that. Um, <laughs> but I, for me, yeah, I, I, I love, love, love Lilo and Stitch. Uh, though I have a really special connection because for my 10th birthday, I got to take a trip to Disney World. And so for that, when I went there, I was kind of like... 
because I wasn't in a major Disney phase at that time. So I was like, okay, if I have to pick like one Disney thing to be excited for there, what would it be? And I kind of came to the conclusion, you know, I really, really liked Lilo and Stitch. So when I was there, it was like, I'm going to get a Stitch hat. I got a Stitch sort of bracelet. I got a Stitch autograph. It was like, I'm going to go in for the full Lilo and Stitch experience. Because it was rather new at the time. So there was a lot of advertisement for it there. And I was like, yeah, I really like this movie. Let's go all in for it. And I was definitely pretty happy for doing that. That, that is totally fair. And something that I'm really happy about is that, so, Lilo and Stitch the series is on Disney+. Plus. Uh-huh. So good. I, so, when it was originally on TV, I know that I never got to see all of the episodes, and that always just really, really annoyed me, because I was like, I love, I love Lilo and Stitch so much! And then they never released the DVD collection in nice. the UK, because they're assholes. So when it, you know, finally got appeared on Disney Plus, I was just like, oh my god. And then realised, oh, I have actually seen more than I thought I had. I, uh, yeah, I'm so glad that I can finally say I have watched the entirety of Lilo and Stitch the series. So I have watched all of the, um, the Stitch stuff that I want to experience because the anime series does not exist as far as I'm concerned. What about the second anime series that's a Chinese anime? Um, I, I, I don't know, <laughs> but if it's any relation to the first anime series, God no, because, you know, Hawaii and Stitch and Lilo need to be together forever, so anything else is incorrect. It's interesting because the anime in Japan was just treated as a soft reboot, but then for America, they had the wonderful idea, and by wonderful I mean absolutely terrible idea, to go, hey, what if we were to make it that Stitch, in an argument with Lilo, just decided, I hate this, I'm going to Japan, which is the worst, so if you're gonna watch it, watch it in Japanese, because of the fact that then it's not a sacrilege. <laughs> but there's still the, the, the Lilo episode, just... Ugh. I think in the Japanese version, it's like an alternate universe sort of thing, and I, I don't know. But regardless, I do like the idea of them doing it with um, Okinawa there, because that's kind of like, you know, the Hawaii of Japan. I think it's an interesting choice, and it makes more sense than just what if Stitch was in mainland China, which is like, hmm, I don't know about that. I don't know about that choice. That's a strange one there. You sure you're gonna go with that? All right, okay, that's fine. You could have done something with Mushu. He's right there. Oh, wait, China hates Mushu. Yeah. Oh, well. But yes, I, I, I will still hold out hope that we will get a, um, a Hawaii dealer and Stitch world at some point. It's, it's never gonna happen, but... I will still hold out hope, because I, I need that in my life. I could see it happening, because I feel like now that we have the Kingdom Hearts 3 sort of style of world making, I think that could be done easier than, say, a San Francisco. very much. Oh god, yeah. That, that's way easier to make than that, or even some of the open world stuff for, um, you know, the Pirates of the Caribbean. Huh, I like that battle theme a lot, actually. Yeah, the, the ending of it kind of goes buck wild ham with a million things being thrown at you, and yeah, I had a uh, tough time with that at the end, where it's like the whole time, it's like, this is pretty good, and then at the end, it's like, surprise! Here comes the wave! <laughs> but at least it teaches you the wave pattern beforehand in a glide section, you know? Hmm, oh, definitely. Oh, I, I must have missed an ability crystal. Yes, you probably did. Um, but also, so, I do like the fact, so, Haoli Haoli means happy happy, and um, Makao Kao means are you ready. Okay, cool. Uh, proud mode. This sucks. This one sucks so much. There, um, I'll give it a shot. I like Lino and Stitch a lot, by the way. Thanks for asking my opinion. I, I mean, we gave, you, we gave you time and you were playing on proud mode. <laughs> Yeah, and also, it, it's your commentary channel, so you're free to just voice your opinion whenever you like. Well... No, don't rise, it's up. 
<laughs> oh, there they are. The stuff that makes you go, hmm, what an old piece of media. Hmm. I mean, at least they just did the, uh, the teepees rather than, you know, the, the, the characters themselves, because... Yeah. I mean, you can sort of go, okay, that's it's still not okay, but it's at least not really racist no i will say like having them there that's all right because the, i mean that is a structure that exists although i guess the implication is that um you know neverland is a place off the coast of the united states of america okay sure all right but, you know, yeah, it, it's more the, the characters there, but it's just uh, the fact that it reminds you of them makes you go, <laughs> Yeah, it's, it, it's really not okay. Um, and, I mean, obviously, Disney's run-ins with racism are basically why we will never, ever see Song of the South ever again. Um, well, there's a couple um, things where... I think a couple episodes of old TV shows on uh, Disney Plus there uh, start with saying like, hey, uh, you know, some of the views of the, you know, when this were made were and there's depictions, uh, there's a Spider-Man episode of the old Spider-Man show, like the, like the old one, where it's like, I think the third episode or something, which features literally like the worst stereotypes of like World War II era Japan. Mm. Um, and they basically, like, it's, it's on the service and they just say like, hey, this came out at a time where this was used as kind of propaganda. We're putting it up, but giving you a warning. So yeah. maybe in the future they could do that. But of course, yeah, it might be tougher for Song of the South because that's kind of, you know, a whole thing versus one episode of a greater thing. Yeah, I mean, I suppose it's one of those things where... I mean, I don't, from what I can remember from the general perception of it was never particularly a great film. It just had Zippity Doodah, which is a actually pretty fun song. Mm -hmm. It's just that, um, yeah, it's... So, because the thing is, is that, so obviously they've got the original Dumbo, they've got Peter Pan, they've got Lady and the Tramp up on um, Disney+. Plus. They have also got notices on them uh, that they include outdated... Um. I think that's the right way to go about it, though, because it, it's better to point out that it's there and it's wrong than to just say, what? This thing never existed, because it's like, okay, well, way to erase, you know, that. I think that's the smarter way to go about it. Yeah, exactly. How are you supposed to learn if it's gone? Exactly. And, I mean, obviously, that it, that whole conversation about how do we interact with things that don't match our values of today is a it's a very complicated and very hot kind of controversial subject right now um but really the, the proper answer in my view anyway is you can't erase what has gone before but you can use it as a way of learning and teaching that that is no longer okay. So it's just how you frame the media or thing that is associated with that um, not pleasant behaviour or um, opinions. And that's sort of how you should approach it, but obviously hey, you get the whole things of, hey, oh, you're censoring it, and, oh, right, history. I think it's also a, a deeply personal thing, but because it's personal, I think the choice is important. Because if if you don't like it, don't watch it. However, if, if someone wants to use it, say, for academic purposes, if they want to write a paper on, you know, Peter Pan, and they can't watch the movie because it's been removed from the world because of its, you know, outdated stereotypes. I think it's important that the choice is there to be able to engage with it, but, you know, allowing people to say, okay, I, you know, I'm not interested in, and giving that warning, of course. Oh yeah, definitely. I, I, yeah, I definitely agree that, that that is the way to go because obviously you've got also the whole approach of what if someone is wanting to write academically, yeah, about 
racism as a whole and how that was racist issues in that time period if you're not able to access that media it's a bit difficult to analyze and explain what happened yeah yeah i agree let's see if we can uh, synthesize anything now that was a good discussion but we've spoken enough about it so uh, let's move on here oh yes hey hey also shout out to the fact you got a card of experiment 221 sparky shout outs to my boy sparky yeah, Sparky is pretty awesome, as are a lot of the experiments, actually. Before Shard. Oh, we're doing the... doing the, the crafting things to craft other things. Well, I think I'm gonna have to grind for a few of these now, so... I'm gonna put my profile icon as fucking Sigma, yeah. I wonder if we'll show off some online stuff in here, I haven't decided yet. I mean, I have I have my Switch copy ready to go, if that's something you'd like to go with. Oh, yes, that is a thing. Maybe we'll do a bonus video, or maybe we'll do it before we uh, reach the final uh, place. We shall see. I mean, what I would probably say would be a, a fun approach would be if, you know, we, uh, even if it was an extra video, because obviously there are a bunch of other songs that we can unlock and experience that aren't part of the world tour, it'd probably be fun to show them off. Well, so. It all comes down to the whims of fate, rather the whims of N. Tom who uploads these videos. Indeed. So maybe include me in conversations from now on, yeah? He says, focusing on playing this music rhythm game, which is the hardest game to do live commentary for. Yeah. But still doing a stellar job of it, actually. Um, I've not been super, uh, super a fan of my performance in this sesh, but uh, the songs are getting harder, so maybe I should just cut myself some slack. Oh, definitely. Also, Enter the Darkness is incredible. I mean, in general, the Keyblade Graveyard is the coolest thing ever. It is. Oh, uh, breakdown's coming. I said it's cool, but I'm not a personally a big fan of the random encounter tornadoes. Those I could live without. <laughs> Agreed. Th those were definitely not the best bit. <laughs> Birth by sleep. Like, maybe it's a callback to the random encounter bubbles in the world that never was, or rather, um, the end of the world in uh, Kingdom Hearts 1, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, it's not very fun for gameplay, just put, put enemies in the area, please. A little bit of a uh, Sora's theme playing right now. Well, it makes sense, because it's Vinitas' theme, so it's got to have elements of Sora and Ven. Nice. ba 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 beast Thank you, thank you. Been a while since the full chain, so I'm kind of glad to get there. Oh, nothing but good songs from here on out, guys. Pretty much. Uh huh, uh huh. That one's for personal end on time. <laughs> That's hard on Proud. I uh, don't have bugs in me, stop saying that. <laughs> uh. I was like, when are we going to get to recode? I was like, oh yeah, we did it in like four minutes. <laughs> All right. Ooh, this one's good. <laughs> but technically, Black Powder should come first, so. This one's also really, really, really good. Yeah, I like Black Powder a lot. I remember reading it wasn't part of the set list. I was surprised when I was watching someone play through the game, because obviously it's a music rhythm game. There's not many spoilers apart from the end game. But yeah, I love this track. Oh yeah, it, it's amazing. 
it's really, really good, and I was like, I, I just picked the song, because I don't really look at the song titles, I'm like, okay, well, let's hit the next one, and then I was playing, and I'm like, oh dang, this is really good, what is this song called? And I'm like, Black Powder, huh, okay, not, not, a, not a song name I would equate with Kingdom Hearts being, you know, the primary ingredient to dynamite? Sure, <laughs> alright. <laughs> Maybe it's because this finale is quite explosive. Possibly. Most likely. Or maybe this was, you know, how Yoko Shinomura just likes to use random phrases in different languages? This was her, you know, the English one, where she's like, you know, we got all these deep meanings in Latin and Italian. Let's go with uh, something meaningful in English. Uh, black powder. That's good. Write that down. <laughs> Based. Uh, yeah, it's a very fitting track for uh, fighting Master Xehanox. It's both evil but a little bit heroic as well. I think that's why it works so well because it encapsulates pretty much all of what Birth by Sleep is. It's a bit dark. It's a bit heroic. There's sort of you've got the the villainous bits thrown in, but also you've got the tragic bits thrown in. And it does, it really works to capture that whole moment. In general, there's a couple songs here at the end of Birth by Sleep where your notes are pretty much being the choir, and those ones feel the best to hit because you're like, I feel like I'm actually part of a choir. It's so cool. Yeah. That's a good piece of music. Spin on you crazy whirlwinds, you. Ah, now we have a bit of Rage Awakened. Good. Which is also a sick name. It's amazing. Defeat Xehanort and take back your body. Oh, it's so cool! Nice. We also missed, um, while you guys were having a racism run, uh, put Peter Pan in his Master place. <laughs> oh yes, of course. Terra, Remember how Mora was like, hmm, I think today I shall recreate CGI in in-game engine. As they fought, Xehanort summoned Kingdom Hearts. Props for doing what they did with this, because, like, trying to replicate that in an engine is an impressive attempt. Obviously, it does not look anywhere near as cool, and my god if it had been in the Kingdom Hearts 3 engine. Oh boy. But, still. It is a nice touch that in the HD versions they added when uh, when Terra's armor there uh, is is takes his final bow. Uh, they add a cape to him so that to to connect there into Kingdom Hearts 2, where he has the cape when you fight him as the lingering will. Mm hmm. <laughs> Such a weird meta sort of thing. He kind of poops out the cape as well. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Just out of nowhere. Ah, oh, I'm a trading card. All right. Banger time. Yes. Let's go. Oh, and it's not Rage Awakened, it's Rage Awakened Dash the Origin. Boy, I love Japanese naming conventions. Oh, uh, Enter the Darkness is an unlockable track, by the way. You know the one that actually played in the Birth by Sleep trailer in Kingdom Hearts 2? Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, dun 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 and so on. Yeah. I watched someone, um, I think it's Violin SR, do that on Proud with uh, Performer Mode on, and the end is as crazy as you think it is. I will have to watch that. <laughs> yeah, because Lord knows I ain't playing that on Proud with Performer Mode. Ditto. <laughs> So how do we feel about uh, the end of Birth by Sleep, with uh, Terra's fall to the dark side, as it were? I think that it was really well done. The rest of Terra's fall to darkness, i.e. most of his story, less so. But I think that the entire finale bit 
was just spectacular and it worked really well. I will say, um, before actually playing this game and, you know, learning the story, I never, ever would have pieced together that Terra would become, you know, Terra North there. And, you know, as soon as he got the white hair, I'm like, oh, hey, doesn't that look like, oh my god! <laughs> that and the reveal of, uh, the Guardian there being... Oh, yes. Potentially, you know, maybe someone else made me, you know, both of those were things I never expected, but then you look in hindsight and go, well, of, of course, that just makes sense. Oh my god, it's so cool. What a fucking amazing track, and I'm really glad I, uh, full chain that. Quite right. I remember, actually, the day I got spoiled on Terra actually being Terra Nox. I think we all guessed it beforehand. Yeah, I didn't. But it was when I went on to GameFAQs to check the PAL release date for Birth by Sleep, and uh, I was looking at dates and whatnot, and I just happened to see a voice list, and it said, like, the Japanese voice actor for Terra, also Master Xehanort. Yeah... Well, little spoiler there, but hey, at least, uh... At least there's enough twists left in Kingdom Hearts to keep you surprised. Indeed. Indeed. Alright, the final track of Birth by Sleep, Dismiss. I ain't starting with Proud difficulty, you can fuck off. <laughs> Bad memories of uh, the other two Radiant Garden tracks, but enough about this. I must save Terra, even though he's right there. Yeah, and, um, you know, yeah, re rescue Terra, but it's clearly not Terra because, you know, Terra wasn't that evil. Debatable. <laughs> Misguided was Terra, but he didn't actually actively do anything evil. Basically, what Richie is saying is Anakin Skywalker did nothing wrong, <laughs> and, um, you know, he, by the end, he made the right decision, so everything is forgiven. No. <laughs> <laughs> Purely because, obviously, you've got the two sides, so you've got Anakin. Anakin actively chooses to kill a bunch of younglings. Um, he does not get mind-controlled to kill a bunch of younglings. He chooses to do that. The only things that Terra does that are actually really evil are steal Aurora's heart, but he was being mind-controlled by Maleficent at that particular moment in time. None of the other stuff that he does is actually that bad. Apart from, you know, killing his master, but he... That's pretty bad, though. <laughs> pretty bad, but also he doesn't actually do the killing. That's Master Xehanort, he just, you know, softens him up a little bit. Also, Terra was defending them. Exactly, so there is a heroic motive behind the action, it's just that it didn't end very well. You know, I would pay someone to reanimate the killing the younglings scene with Terra there, <laughs> and when instead of the lightsaber do appearing or being going, Psh, it's Terra with the the keyblade appearing. I would pay a source filmmaker person to animate that. That would be pretty fun. <laughs> nice. Instead of stabbing them and killing the children, he just bonks them on the head, because that's about all a Keyblade can do. <sighs> but that turns Aqua into Padme, and I don't want that, because she's flat enough as, all, as, as it's already. I, I don't think she's very flat. She's decently sized. You... <laughs> I'm sorry. Aqua wouldn't become Padme. Aqua would become Obi-Wan. Yeah, true. Thank you, Richie, for just Dempsey rolling my horrible joke. All right, let's see bad ending the game. Fell into a deep sleep. You have a nap here. I'll be back for you in like ten plus years. Aqua faced off against Terra, whose body Harder, was killed Daddy. by Master What? Leon. What? <laughs> to restore his heart to him, Aqua and that's where she became she Dark Aqua. Oh, drove Terra's heart get out of my heart! Terra fell to darkness, refusing to lose her friend. 
Aqua sent him back to the realm of light. So why can't he we both ride the no armor? And called himself no, but shut up. Thematic reasons. I know. Trapped in the realm of darkness and also, Iron, if you remember that Zigbar break is Lushu, him following Xehanort, who has the Master of Masters Keyblade, makes a lot more sense. Quite right. And saved her. That's why he wanted it. He wanted it back so he could bequeath it to someone else, probably. Sora, still just a child, had previously joined his heart with Ventus's. The connection they shared brought Ventus's wounded heart back to him. Thankfully, Sora's like innards is a fucking hospital for heart, so it's fun. See, I was gonna say an apartment complex, you know, it's or, or, or I guess a hotel would be better. You know, you can check in and <gasps> occasionally check out. Fucking sweet, Lois. Although, I will say, hold off for now. Why? Because plot-wise, next comes Dream Drop Distance. Yeah, but... I'm doing it anyway. Yeah, this this is Birth by Sleep Part Two, pretty much. So I think it makes sense. Uh huh. I I could do proud, but for the purposes of the playthrough, I'm gonna do standard. I could complete proud. It probably won't be pretty, but I could complete it. <laughs> huh. So this is what you were doing, Aqua. This is pretty cool, actually. Wave of Darkness is just amazing. So when I played the uh, the demo for this game, uh, I pretty much said, "All right, let's go. Wave of Darkness, proud difficulty, performer. Show me the upper limits of this." And boy, geez, does it have some upper limits of get those fingers ready. So I was like, "Okay, good. That's that's a good indicator that this game, you know, goes far with its structure." So how do we feel about Zero Two? Uh, Zero Two is fun. I mean, it was a good kind of lead-in to Kingdom Hearts 3 in the sense of, I suppose, it, it gave a chance to acclimatise to what would become the gameplay style for 3. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, there were still things that needed tweaking, which did get tweaked for the final game, but it, it was a fun experience and... Yeah, I, I, I enjoyed my time with it. Also, I mean, just the whole final sequence of it is just epic, and Wave of Darkness is one of the best songs in the Kingdom Hearts franchise. Yeah, I agree on uh, all points there. I'm a bit sad that uh, Phase 2 with the uh, the choral bits isn't in there. That is an oversight. I do kind of wish... Uh the dress-up system from that game was in uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 proper because, boy geez, you give me a bit of character customization and I will use it no matter how basic of it it is. I love that. Um, it was also kind of a nice little thing for... Square Enix has been doing this a lot recently where they've been putting out demos um, and then having people provide feedback. Uh, we saw that with Octopath, we're seeing it now with Bravely Default 2. And they even did that with um, with 0 0.2, where afterwards they had a survey, which, you know, definitely seemingly affected kind of how Kingdom Hearts 3 feels. And I think that's such a smart way to go about game development, is getting that actual oh, yeah. feedback from people and using it to, to make the game better. Because, honestly, every time I see a comparison between, hey, we got, you know... These, this feedback, we put it in the game, which they've done a couple times videos now of. It's like, wow, every single thing is better. So that's really cool. I, have to, I, I do agree. And it, it's a way of effectively doing focus testing without doing a focus test. Because when you do that as focus groups, the loudest people always end up taking over the conversation. You don't necessarily get the... Realm of best results. I mean, that's effectively what happened to... Was it Fuse? Was wrong. Oh, yeah, that the FPS. Yeah, yeah, which was originally going to be like this really cool, cartoony, um, third-person shooters-type thing, and then it turned into the most herself. bland thing because it was focus-grouped to high Aqua heaven, to and it was just rubbish. Heart, and so doing the approach images. of 
doing a demo and saying this is a chance for After us to get feedback means darkness, that you're getting accurate Sarah, feedback and hopefully broad darkness. enough feedback but that you can make later, better decisions about Zandor. what to do because you can see the trends of Aqua what are most people time, struggling with or not liking, what are most people Jesus liking, what can we do more of, and so on and so forth. And it works. It Together. is... One of the best ways, I think, to do that sort of testing in video games. Hey, do you remember uh, on the 1.0 version of this game and the opening cutscene how big they made Aqua's chin accidentally? <laughs> I don't, but uh, I remember how they got rid of Michael's shirt. Like, so when this game first came out, um, the in the opening, like in the, and it, this is the pre-rendered CG opening, um, with the sick remix, uh, they accidentally gave Aqua for one shot an absolutely massive chin, and so for the 1.1 release patch, they fixed her chin, but there's still pictures online of it, and it is like, it is a strong man chin. Oh, that looks pretty bad. I'm glad they decided to fix it called KH3. I'm not talking about the chin, I'm talking about the, uh, the R. Oh lord. So yeah, I actually would have preferred if um, 0 0.2 was part of Kingdom Hearts 3, like right at the start. Hey, there's Aqua's memory dive. Um, so yeah, I think we're going to round off Birth by Sleep by playing Terror's theme. Totally fair. Okay. <laughs> I thought it would never end. <laughs> Just be here forever collecting levels. Uh, let's see. You know what that reminds me of? Uh-huh. Da-da-da-da-da from Secret Rings. Oh, fucking hell. Oh, I put that out of my memory. <laughs> Alright, Tara, this is going to be a little bit cringe, but, uh... Welcome to your life! Oh, bloody hell. Don't show the parts of Master Xehanort, please. It's all Master Xehanort. Pretty much. Although I will say I am very glad that they included some of the Birth by Sleep opening film in this because, and also, you know, the secret ending of Kingdom Hearts 2 because, I mean, some, that, that CGI work is still incredible even today. I know that, like, with the graphics of Kingdom Hearts 3, a lot of people say, like, we've reached the CG cutscene quality and we're close but there's still something about that pre-rendered CGI that just, it does hit different. I mean, even the seed, the pre-rendered scenes that are in Kingdom Hearts 3, when you see them, you're like, nah, it still hits in a, in a, in a, in a better way than the in-game graphics. Oh yeah, and I mean, I think it's, it's one of those things of in-game graphics are always going to be behind kind of pre-rendered graphics purely because they're both developing at the same time. Therefore, when in-game graphics improve, pre-rendered graphics also improve. So they don't... They're, it's unlikely that for a long time they're ever going to align. There's a couple pre-rendered scenes in the Final Fantasy VII Remake that just made me go like, I'm happy we're still getting the era of the Square Enix pre-rendered cutscene, because when, when every time you get them, you're like, yeah, they still look good, and there's still something to look forward to. Oh, hell yeah. You can get a bit of uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 cutscenes here, because, yeah, I guess they tell the whole story. Tell the whole character story, which is really cool. Oh god, when he rips off the, the tape on the mouth, that's the best. That's such a payoff for character design. Definitely. Missed a few of those, but it kind of got to a bit where it was going in a weird angle. I couldn't really tell what was coming. Yeah, it's the one issue that I do... Well, one of the issues I have with the memory dives is that, yeah, sometimes the angle just gets a bit odd and then you just, you're having to go based on the, the note itself and you're kind of going, oh, I'm not sure, this is weird. Well, big fan of Terra's theme. If I could have it on loop forever, I would. But uh, we're here. Yes, I know you guys are eager to uh, have your tracks played. We're getting to you. Calm down. Zip zoom. Squadala, we're off. 
Whoa, whoa, all right, we're here. Whew. All right, guys, that'll do it for uh, Birth by Sleep, so please join us next time when Dream Drop Distance drops. See you then. Bye-bye.